Donna Schwartz here. You know, over the past 27 years, I've taught hundreds of students to be successful on their instruments. With my saxophone players, once they've played for a while and have gotten a full command of the range of the horn, we go into the altissimo register. Usually we start with F sharp, and then we actually skip the bugger note, the G, we go to A, because it's a little easier to pop out. But for many people, my students and, and other people I speak to, altissimo G is a pain in the you-know-what to play. So in this video, I want to talk to you not just about the standard ways of approaching altissimo G, but I want to um, introduce you to a concept that I learned from playing brass instruments. You see, I grew up playing trumpet, and I still play trumpet to this day, and I studied with phenomenal teachers. And what they taught me applies to playing an altissimo G on the tenor, or actually really applies to playing anything on the tenor sax or alto sax or any of the saxophones. So let me get the basic stuff out of the way. You do need to have a mouthpiece and a reed combination that can handle playing the altissimo register. And that's unique for each person. You know, you, I can't say to you, the harder the reed, you know, the higher the note, the softer the reed, it'll more vibrate, it'll vibrate more and you can get the note. Look, everybody's different with that regard. So you have to make sure, number one, that, you know, if you're a beginner, you're not trying, <laughs> you're not trying to play altissimo G. You need some experience playing. You need to have a full command of the range of the horn from low B flat to the, to the high F. Um, you need to be playing solidly on your mouthpiece and, and your reed. Make sure you have the right combination for you. Your horn also, you know, has a big factor to do with that. If you get the, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the hundred dollar special, maybe a little difficult to get some of the notes out. So that's another thing to consider too. Um, the shape of your horn too. You want to make sure that there's no leaks in the pads. That's really important. All these things are super, super important. Uh, your fingerings. Every horn is different. I have a Mark VI here. Um, I have a backup horn that's like uh, basically a no-name brand, but it's great for me to use on outdoor gigs and stuff like that. The thing, the interesting thing is that with each different brand name and even within the brand names, depending on how old or how new they are, you may have a different fingering to play some of the altissimo notes. And you may find that you're getting some strange altissimo notes coming out with different fingerings than, than what you would expect. So there's lots of variables here. But this concept that I want to teach you stays the same. Now, this is really a brass instrument. The only thing that makes it a woodwind instrument is the reed, the wooden reed. Even if you play synthetic reeds, like I did for many years, I played the Legere's. Um, it's a woodwind instrument, but it's really, it's made out of brass, okay? So we want to treat it like a brass instrument in the way that we warm up, in the way that we warm down, in the way that we stretch our technique, stretch our flexibility. So one of the things that you want to think about with that concept is if you put the horn in your mouth and you blow, it, you know, maybe you'll, let's say no fingerings, maybe, you'll, you know, you'll get a C-sharp to come out. Sometimes it'll be in tune, sometimes it won't be. But if I have no concept of what that C-sharp sounds like, and I just put the horn in my mouth and blow, I don't know what's going to come out the bell. I'm just thinking the horn's going to take care of the work. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Listen, the horn mouthpiece, that's an amplification of what's going on up here. So the concept is very simple. There's two parts to it. You got to hear it, which means you got to hear the pitch for this example. And here's the key that no one does. You got to sing it. Now, let me backtrack. I can't stand my singing voice. I really don't like it. Actually, I hated it when I was younger. I've gotten better. I've, I'm almost appreciating it now. All right, so a lot of people kind of feel the same way as me. Some people love their voice. That's awesome. Yay you. That's good for you. Um, but the, the really important thing is that you don't know whether you're really hearing it or not until you can replicate it by singing it. So, for example, the note C sharp. Well, I can go to a piano, and I'm on the tenor sax. If I go to a piano and uh, hit the note B, then I'll get the note C sharp for us. I could also get a tuner that can manually play that note. Okay, that's that's concert B. By the way, this old relic is from 1984. <laughs> I was very young when I got this. I was like maybe two years old. 
No, I'm joking. <laughs> Actually, this is a this is a great this is a great tuner. This is a Korg uh, DTM12. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but this is awesome. It's a tuner and a metronome. Anyway, I, I digress. So if you can find a tuner that can play the note that you want, that'll give you the pitch to match, the pitch to hear in your head, and then you want to sing it. So let's get that pitch again. Do, do, do. Let me shut that off for a second. Do. I'll have more success if I'm able to hear it in my head, screaming in my head, and be able to sing it, and then play it. So that's really key. Now let's get back to Altissimo G. You need to hear the note. So I'm gonna get my tune around again, and here's the thing. Um, I'm gonna go for Concert F. That's the highest that it'll go, F5. Okay, it's really an octave higher that we're looking for the sound for, but if I can hear this F in my head screaming, Actually, it is that exact pitch. If I can hear that pitch in my head, I'm going to have much more success getting that note to come out. Now, listen, let's talk about fingerings for a second. The most common fingering for Altissimo G on the tenor is the the front, basically front F, right, almost like an A, but front F, and you lift up your second finger. So it's these two fingers played like that. Some of you have the fork key over here. Uh, this is a Mark VI that doesn't have that, so I just do this. That's all I do. Um, so that's one of the most common fingerings for Altissimo G. So let's follow my process. Okay, and it works. Another fingering that you can use, uh, by the way, that was also with the octave key. The another fingering is octave key, one, no, no four key, one, three, one on your right hand, and then the F sharp trill key. So your right hand is gonna look like this. I could angle the camera down, I just wanna save a couple of seconds doing this. Okay, so here's another fingering. So it's one, three, one, and then the F sharp trill key and your octave key. Let me hear it first. Now, for my horn, I was experimenting with this before, this last fingering that I did sometimes comes out flat. Um, I can manipulate it inside my mouth to make it in tune. Very cool. The first way I showed you, this way, usually is more in tune. However, sometimes that way goes a little sharp too. So you have to know the pitch tendencies of your horn. Now I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Okay, and this is super important, and most people will not take the time to do this, but I, I, I strongly feel if you do this, this is gonna give you a lot more success. First thing you wanna do is hear the pitch, hear it screaming in your head, and let's get out the handy retro tuner to do that. Hear it, sing it. I just hear it, sing it. Now I'm gonna sing it into the mouthpiece. Why am I doing that? I want to imitate what's going on in my throat area and inside my mouth so that when I play it, I'm imitating nature. I'm imitating how I'm singing it. You may have a question, by the way, do I have to sing it that high? You're singing a ridiculous note. You're a freak of nature. No, <laughs> no. Uh, what I would suggest though is if you could sing your G in the highest range of the G note that you can. Again, the reason is because you want to imitate nature. You want to imitate what's going on in your throat, um, inside your mouth, how you're voicing the note. Okay, that's that's the, the, the part of this concept. So hear it, sing it, voice it, hear. Yes, it sounds ridiculous, I know. Just do it anyway, trust me. have much more success getting that altissimo G. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you follow that process of hear it, sing it, sing it into the horn, 
and actually sing and finger into the horn if you're working on tunes, you're going to have much more success on the tenor sax or any saxophone because I'm going to circle back to what I said in the beginning. Brass. Treat it like a brass instrument. For brass instruments, we make the sound with our lips. The mouthpiece, the horn is just an amplification. Here we need the reed to help us. Okay, so we're a little bit limited that way. But as brass players, if we can't play that thing on the mouthpiece, it means we're not hearing it. We really have to hear it in order to make our lips produce the pitch in order to get it through the horn. It's the same concept except your reed's helping you to get this. So if you could hear what you want to play, sing it, and then sing it through the horn and finger it, maybe then do air sounds, and then play it, you're going to have a lot more success overall. Will you have to go through that whole entire process for every single thing that you play? No, that's nuts. But if you do that as part of your practicing every day, or if you're working on something that's challenging for you, it's going to make it less and less challenging because you're, you're training your body to approach it the right way to imitate nature or what's natural for you. Okay, so there you have it. How to play Altissimo G, one interesting concept that can definitely help you nail that pitch. So if you like this video, please like it. Please share it with your friends who play saxophone or other woodwind instruments. And be sure to sign up for my website at www.donnerschwartzmusic.com. If you sign up right now, I have a free video, three tips to help you fatten up your saxophone tone. Some of them may be familiar, but some of them are probably not. So definitely check it out, donnerschwartzmusic.com and sign in to my, subscribe to my newsletter and you'll get that free video. Thanks for joining me today. On that note, take care. Have a great day.